Working from home tip number 74. A coffee stout in a coffee cup looks just like coffee. Keep things smooth this fall. Platinum package. With the lawnmower 4.0, you can leave the shredding to the sacks and not your skin, thanks to proprietary advanced skin safe technology. And because it's IPX7 rated, the band can play on, whether it's rain or shine. Of course, it's not all about the solo. You gotta give your backup singers their moment to shine. The crop gel will give them the smooth harmony thereafter, while the crop exfoliator won't have you playing Rhapsody in Blue. Take five and go to manscaped.com slash craft computing to get 20% off, free international shipping, and two additional free gifts. That's manscaped.com slash craft computing. And remember, your balls will thank you. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. Well, well, look what's inside again. This is the Ywinlira SV315 SSD server that I reviewed at the beginning of 2022. And it's a server that, while I did review mostly positively, it never really found a home in my server rack. Today, we're going to try to fix that. This is a server that's been in videos a couple of times here on the channel, but the first time it didn't go so well. In fact, I blew up the motherboard from using the wrong PCI Express risers. Apparently this one requires some very specific units. Once those arrived and I replaced the motherboard, uh, I gave the server an overall positive review, but it was not without its shortcomings. While the SV315 does boast some pretty impressive specs, including a pair of Intel Xeon E5 2643 V2 CPUs with 6 cores and 12 threads each at 3.3GHz, 384 GB of DDR3 ECC registered memory at 1866, a dual 10-gigabit network card, it is let down by some of the other hardware inside the server. There are 10 2.5 inch drive bays up front on the server, but only 8 of them are wired to the onboard SAS controller. The other 2 are dedicated SATA ports that run on their own independent controller. That makes hardware raid a bit of a difficulty, but today we're going to be solving that by running a software raid thanks to ZFS and TrueNAS. And while these 8 2.5 inch drive bays do go back to an 8 channel SAS controller, it's a 3 gigabit controller, not a 6 gigabit controller, which means all of the SSDs that you install would be running at half bandwidth. We're going to be solving that today by replacing the onboard with this controller right here. This is an LSI 9508i and it has 8 independent SAS ports, all of which can run at 12 gigabit per second. This will also run my SATA SSDs at the full 6 gigabit per second that they're rated at. Last but not least, in my previous attempts to run the server, I think I was flying a little bit too close to the sun when it came to my drive selection. I was using a set of outdated and used Intel SSDs that were very much near end of life. In fact, immediately following the video, two of the drives started giving me smart errors and the whole RAID array corrupted. So I think we're going to solve that today by adding some brand new SATA SSDs. So I do want to give a shout out to Patriot for sending out eight of their Burst 1.92 terabyte SATA SSDs. While these don't have a DRAM cache, that should be made up for by the fact that I have, well, 384 gigabytes of DDR3 ECC memory on board the server, which means that should be able to handle a fairly significant cache pool while the SSDs can serve up data as quickly as possible. So with all that out of the way, I don't think there's anything left to do but finally get this thing together and see if I can finally build the SATA SSD server of my dreams. Let's get started.
Alright, so it's been a few days and I've got the Y1 Lyra up and running here in my server rack. So is it third time lucky or should I have left the server sitting on a shelf here in my garage? To start off, I went ahead and installed TrueNAS Core, configured the SSDs into a RAID Z2, created a new data set and an SMB share, and then created a new user to access that data. If any of this setup is new to you, I do have a full tutorial on setting up TrueNAS, as well as shares and permissions, and I'll make sure to link that video down in the description. With all eight of my 1.92 terabyte SSDs in a RAID Z2, our usable capacity on the server is right around 10 and a half terabytes. Given my average video project size is between 500 and 750 gigabytes, that should be more than enough room for editing ongoing videos. Once I have the server fully up and running in production, I'm going to create a replication service that will copy the current project folder over to my Craftinator for long-term storage. Once a project is completed, I can simply delete the project off of the SSD server, as Craftinator should already have a copy. But is this all going to work the way I want it to? The reason the server was set on a shelf in the first place was because of its very poor performance in the last video. Moving to a brand new set of SSDs and a new SAS HBA should solve everything that was plaguing me, at least in theory. First, let's go ahead and take a look at my current server's performance, as if we can't even beat the Craftinator, there's no reason to switch over to an SSD server that's only going to draw more power in the rack and increase complications. Craftinator is currently set up with seven 20 terabyte Seagate Enterprise drives running in a RAID Z2, giving me right around 85 terabytes of usable space. In synthetic testing, sequential reads had no problem saturating a 10 gigabit network with connection speeds of 1,041 megabytes per second. Random reads were a much bigger issue though, as we saw speeds of just 80 megabytes per second there. When it comes to actually transferring files from Craftinator down to a local server, sequential speeds were much closer to around 700 megabytes per second, which is definitely not bad for a sped of spinning disks, but I'm betting we can do better. Write speeds are a similar story. Synthetic testing sits right around one gigabyte per second, but actual throughput is much lower, somewhere between 250 and 400 megabytes per second after that initial burst of speed. The Y1 Lyra, which I think I'm going to name Stargazer, sees some modest improvements under synthetic testing. Obviously our bottleneck for top speed is going to be the 10 gigabit network, but it's the random speeds that show impressive gains, doubling the write performance and nearly tripling the random read speeds. Of course, that doesn't matter much if it doesn't translate into real-world gains. Let's just say for sequential reads and writes, the Stargazer had no trouble whatsoever holding a steady one gigabyte per second, even with some very extended tests. So I think the third time through this project turned out to be well worth the effort. The really crazy thing about this entire setup is probably how affordable it wound up being. Saying the specs out loud, this sounds like a crazy expensive project. The Y1 Lyra SV315 1U server with rails and drive trays, a pair of Xeon E5 4627v2 CPUs, 384 gigabytes of ECC registered DDR3 running at 1600, an LSI SAS 3008i HBA, dual HB 10 gigabit network ports, two 250 gigabyte Samsung 860 EVO SSDs, and eight 1.92 terabyte Patriot Burst Elite SSDs. If you were to build this server today with a slightly more modest 256 gigabytes of memory instead of the 384 that I happen to have on hand, the total cost of this build today would be $1,194. That's using the same CPUs, the same SSDs, the same network card, same HBA controller, and getting you the same performance. I understand affordable is a relative term, but the idea of a 1U 16 core 16 terabyte SSD NAS for under $1,200 is absolutely insane. I think it's safe to say this server is going to be staying in my rack this time around, but there's the issue of that pesky 10 gigabit bottleneck that's going to keep me up at night. I'm definitely going to have to find a solution there and really let this server stretch its legs. Once again, a huge shout out to Patriot for sending over the Burst Elite SSDs for me to use in this server, and as always, there's a full list of affiliate links for parts below if you're wanting to build a Y1 Lyra server for yourself. On your way down there, make sure to drop this video a like and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. If you like the content you see on this channel and want to help support me in what I do, consider joining the Patreon. Link is also down in the video description and helps make projects like this possible. That's going to do it for me in this one. Thank you all so much for watching, and as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers, everyone.
beer for today is from Mackenzie Brewing down in Eugene, Oregon. It is the End All Be All Limited Series Coffee Oatmeal Stout, clocking in at six and a half percent. I love the sim. This is gonna sound like a knock, but don't don't misunderstand me. I love the simplicity of this stout. Uh, not every stout needs to be big and bold and giant and flavorful and transformative and you know, out of body experience like. Uh, sometimes a good stout can just be a good amount of roasted barley and a little bit of coffee, a little bit of chocolate, and can be as simple as your morning coffee. And in this case, I think they nailed it. 